Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech radio-controlled German King Tiger heavy tank. Since the last video update, a lot of progress has been made to the tank's interior hull fittings. As well as you can start seeing the turret starting to take shape, but that's going to be a topic for another video down the road. The main area of focus for this video is on the tank's internal equipment, which let me go ahead and take the turret and the upper deck off, and you get to see more in depth of what I'm referring to. And that's more like it. Here you can see the hull's machinery as well as the electrical components starting to flesh out, and the interior layout is really starting to take shape. We'll be going over exactly what went into the model to bring it up to this condition in this video. With the engine compartment now fabricated and mounted to the vehicle, the next area of focus is going to be the center portion of the vehicle. The reason why this location is important at this time is because now I can start mounting in and fleshing out the tank's interior functions and equipment. Now this part of the build is actually very, very important and must be very well thought out. The reason is for many people who are watching this video, specifically who work in smaller scales, they might see this gigantic cavernous space on the inside of the model and say to themselves, well, there's a lot of space, so there's going to be plenty of real estate in order to input all the equipment. However, that's not necessarily the case. Once the batteries and all the other equipment and gizmos start getting fitted to this model, they, they gobble up free space very, very quickly, and it's not uncommon to run out of free space and you still have a few more functions to go. So careful planning is going to be a must on any of these builds. This is not only true for the King Tiger, but for the Tiger One, Panther, Sherman, what have you. Whenever you work in 1-6 scale radio control, internal space is just as important as they are on the smaller 1-16s. Now, in order to install the equipment, I fabricated a subfloor. This is another feature that I frequently mention on these radio control builds. Now, for a German tank, this is actually more prudent than compared to something like a T-34 or a Sherman. The reason has to do with the torsion bar suspension that we have here underneath. Because of the torsion bar suspension, you cannot just mount the equipment directly to the floor of the tank. Clearly, the torsion bars are going to be in the way, and on top of that, you don't want to have anything touching or restricting the torsion bars in any which way or form. If the torsion bars have any sort of equipment on them, it's going to inhibit the torsion bar from functioning, which is going to screw up your suspension. Now, because of this, Armortech themselves supply you with an instrument panel floorboard. The floorboards generally look like this component that I have here. This is a stock Armatech unit and it's comprised of bent steel. And they're also supplied that of columns which once fitted into the model elevate the floor above the torsion bars. This is a nice feature, however, one reason why I never typically use the kit supply unit First of all is weight. These units are fairly heavy. And the second reason is that they are not big enough, in my opinion, to mount on the equipment. Now, this is specifically true whenever I do a build like this, because if you notice, I have to sacrifice the entire rear of the model for the engine bay interior detailing. If you're building the model totally stock, you can get away with using the stock Armortech part and just add the equipment accordingly. However, when you sacrifice the rear portion of the model, this is when you need to be creative and you need to use up as much of the free space on the front three quarters of the vehicle as possible. Now, in lieu of using the stock Armortech floorboard, I fabricated my own with my standard type of assembly. The floorboard itself is made from polycarbonate Lexan. The Lexan, like I frequently mention, is a nice material for this in that it's very, very durable, it's strong, it's light, and being see-through is also a benefit because if you break a torsion bar or if any other type of issue happens underneath, you can visually see it and address it in a timely manner as opposed to trying to have any guesswork on if you have a nice metal opaque unit in place. Now, in addition to the floorboard itself, you'll notice that mine is considerably wider compared to the stock Armortech one, and it's also considerably longer. I have this little tongue section here, which gives me some more mounting area in between the two motors in the front. Now, also on the floorboard, you'll notice that I went ahead and affixed some aluminum angle to the sides, as well as the center portion here. The aluminum angles mounted to the sides give the polycarbonate more rigidity and prevent any sort of flexing 
in a Boeing manner. This is specifically important for the batteries. The center section here is the battery mounting tray. It's again comprised of several sections of aluminum angle. And the next bit of modification I'm going to do is add two little slits on these sections here in order to secure a Velcro strap which will actually keep the batteries firmly in place. For the assembly, fasteners and nuts are utilized. And all of the crucial fasteners, i.e. the ones that hold the side support straps on, as well as these two straps on, are held on with red Loctite. Now, these two units here are actually held on temporarily because of the way this needs to be affixed to the bottom of the tank. Like I said before, columns are supplied with the Armor Tech kit. However, I'm going to be fabricating my own column units out of turned resin. The turned resin pieces are going to have fasteners protrude from the lower hull upward into the vehicle and they are actually going to aid in locking these two sections in place as well as also help securing the entire floorboard to the model. Now there, in addition to these row of fasteners that are going to be on these pieces of aluminum, there are going to be several others in key locations that are going to also act in securing the floorboard to the tank. And here's the interior now ready for the subfloor to be mounted. The columns have been fabricated and they are currently fastened to the lower panel of the hull. Let me get a closer in view so you get to see exactly how I fabricated these pieces. And now with the camera closer in you get to see exactly how the columns are attached to the model. First the columns themselves are machined from segments of turned resin. The resin segments are all machined to the exact same tolerances. Because of this the floor will be a nice even installation and you're not going to have any sort of dips or craters that can happen if the pieces are not at the same exact height. Now the pieces are actually just slid onto their fasteners. Now the fasteners are very long M3 type bolts and they are affixed to the lower portion of the vehicle. This is done via a single nut that we have down here. Now red Loctite was utilized keeping the fasteners permanently fixed in these locations here. The resin columns themselves, if I can get it into frame, there we go. The resin columns themselves are machined in that they're drilled out and on the bottom portion here we have a small little recess. This recess here is to clear the fastener that's emerging from the lower hull. Because of this now, the column sits flushly with the lower pan. Now because of the way some of the holes were drilled out on the subfloor, a few of the fasteners were pretty close to the edge here where the torsion bar is. Now it is absolutely paramount that absolutely nothing makes contact with the torsion bar. Like I said before, this can restrict the motion of the suspension and cause a hindrance. On the small units where this is present, I went ahead and made special columns where if you can see, I milled out a section of the column that has now perfect clearance with the torsion bar. The torsion bar makes absolutely no contact with the column, but the column can still fully support the weight of the batteries and the other equipment that's going to be affixed to the subfloor. Now in case anyone is wondering if the unit can rotate during the installation of the floorboards, the answer is no, not necessarily. Once everything gets torqued down in place, the column will just stay in its upright position. However, what I am going to do though, as a little bit of insurance, I'm, with a drop of silicone, I am going to add it to the versions that have the segment mill away just to ensure that the piece stays absolutely where it is and makes zero contact or ability to make zero contact with the torsion bar. On a similar note I do have more columns that are fabricated and they're going to be going in the areas in between some of the units that we have here. The versions that we have here are the most important ones as they're the ones that double act as the the units that actually secure the subfloor to the model. The other ones are going to be distributed in between are there just to prevent and give extra strength for the subfloor preventing it from dipping or bowing with the weight of the batteries and the other equipment. These are going to be added in a mapped out format with again the silicone that I mentioned before. And here's the floorboard now permanently affixed to the model.
Like I said before, I went ahead and added more column supports, only these ones here are not held on with fasteners as they're just basically just sandwiched in place with the top of the floorboard mounted on and they are glued to the model with silicone. Now all of the fasteners, in addition to being Loctite in place, also have their washers which distribute the load of the fastener. And now that everything is fully seated, you can see how the Velcro straps are configured and how the batteries actually strap in place. It's at this point now where I could go ahead and actually fit in the batteries. Now for the batteries, like I mentioned in a previous video and in my other RC Armor Tech videos, I utilize 12 volt batteries which are a lithium ion type. Now the vendor which I was utilizing in my older videos is no longer recommended. In fact, they're no longer even in business for reasons that I don't want to really go over in this video. But I did find a replacement source and that is this company over here which is Rely On Battery and their website is relyonbattery.com. These batteries here are basically the exact same spec and the exact same performance as the previous vendor. These batteries just go directly in place and then the Velcro just gets strapped over them. And there we have it. The batteries are now affixed to the model. Now, of course, once the floorboards are added, it's now time to start fleshing out the interior with its internal mechanical components. The first unit I mounted was the speed control module. The speed control module was affixed to the floorboard in the front position, and the reason for the location is because of the wires that connect to the power supply module. The power supply module needs to be located right over the bow hatches. This is for both because of the length of the wire, but more importantly has to do with that that's where the switch is. The switch is always best located underneath a very easy access point, which on a tank, quite simply put, is best underneath one of the bow hatches. Now to mount the power supply, a bridge will either be fabricated or I believe one was included with the Armor Tech kit. However, more information on that, of course, is to follow. But for the speed control module, because of the proximity, right here in the lower hull is fine. Now because of the fasteners that were mentioned before that affixed the floorboard to the hull, the speed control module needs to be mounted in an elevated manner just to prevent any contact with the fasteners for the floorboard mounting. Now this may be difficult to see on screen, however the unit is mounted slightly above the floorboards like I mentioned by about an inch or so. The way the insulation was done was with the use of columns. This is the exact same type of tooling and procedure that I used for the floorboard columns that I mentioned earlier. The unit has approximately four of these columns. Two are on either end, which are used to bolt the unit to the floorboard, and the other ones are just mounted in various locations in the center in order just to keep the unit nice and steady. Now the ones in the bottom I should say the ones on the center portion here are held on with silicone, while the two that actually fasten the unit to the tank are with the two on either end. The fastener, it goes directly through the column and mounts and threads directly into the floorboard. Of course, red Loctite was utilized for this installation. Now from the speed controller module, the next equipment to get ready for insulation are actually the speakers. The reason for this has to do with the sheer size of these units here. These components will take up quite a bit of room on the inside and because of that everything needs to be laid out around the speakers. Now to actually mount them to the tank with the way this particular floorboard was laid out, this left these two little sections over here which were the perfect height and location to actually affix the speakers. To modify the, the battery tray bracket, I went ahead and had to remove the fasteners that I mounted on before, which was by the way no easy task, in part due to the red Loctite. But once the, the fasteners were removed, I was able to mark and drill out the two holes. I can now reinstall this unit again and then it's totally prepared for the mounting of the speakers. Now for the actual speakers, I'll be utilizing the ones that are supplied with the Armor Tech kit, which are these Tannoy speakers. 
These Tannoy speakers have been supplied with the ArmorTech kits for a number of years and can be seen on, on many of the builds that I've done on the ECA channel. They are easy to hook up and are very durable and the sound quality is also very good. Now the Tannoy speakers do come with a little plastic bracket as well as a mounting fastener for mounting purposes. Of course these will not be utilized on this build. For the fastener itself, this is the unit that is supplied. It's a large over molded plastic knob with a brass fastener on the other end. Now rather than utilizing that system, because of the way the mounts need to be configured, the original supply fasteners are just too large and bulbous in order to fit inside the die confines of these locations, so a cap screw is going to be utilized in their place. Now the fastener that I'm going to be utilizing in place is an M6 by I believe 10 millimeter fastener. Now the threads are very similar to the ones that are found on the receptacle portion of the speaker, but however the threads are not quite the same. However they are close enough in order to re-thread the unit. In order to re-thread it, I simply just thread the unit in by hand until it stops. Then with the aid of an Allen wrench key, I just thread the unit in. I basically thread it in and pull it out. Very similar to actually threading something like on the hull with a tap and die. In essence, you're doing the exact same thing. Because the metal on the receptacle is brass, the steel will cut into the brass without too much of a problem. You just thread it all the way down until you bottom out. And outside of that high-pitched squeal, the component threads pretty easily. Once threaded, you can then remove the fastener. You'll notice that no damage was done to either the bolt or to the matching threads on the receptacle itself. And it is more than strong enough at, at securing the speaker to the bay. This is the same procedure, by the way, that I do on all these ArmorTech builds. And here's what the interior looks like now with the speakers affixed. Well, I should say one of them is currently bolted on, but you get the idea. Now, the speaker is not permanently bolted on at this point. There's no Loctite utilized on this fastener. It's just simply just threaded on. The reason for that has to do with I have to remove the speakers again in order to complete the wiring that's going to be patched into the amplifier system, which will be a, a topic and discussion for another video. However, at this point here, though, you can see how the units are going to be affixed in. It, as like I said before, in the center portion here, once the straps are out of the way for the batteries, you can see there's plenty of real estate available for the smoke system, which is going to be needed to run through the engine and out of the exhaust stacks that I showcase in another video. From the speakers, the next machinery to mention is the amplifier and the auxiliary module. The amplifier, of course, like I mentioned before, is to connect to the speakers and is what actually gives you the sound. The auxiliary system is used for the turret functions, such as the turret rotation and the gun elevation. Now, to mount them to the model, I'm going to be putting them towards the sides, facing vertically upward. This is a type of mounting procedure that I like to do on these builds, as it does save a lot on space. Now, one thing to point out, though, is that you want to watch out the locations where you put these in. For the simple fact that on these Armored Tech tanks, there is the tart rotation gearbox that needs to be addressed. The tart rotation gearbox descends into the hull, and if you're not paying attention, you can mount your unit to the tank and then find out you have to redo everything because of the descending motor will make contact with the, the equipment that you mounted on the hull. Here we have the roof temporarily placed onto the hull, and you get to see exactly what I'm referring to. These two holes here and here are for the fasteners that hold up the turret rotation motor. Now, as you can see, they come pretty close to the amplifier system, but I'm, I don't think they're going to make contact. Of course, this is subject to change, and I'm going to know more information towards the next video update. However, you can see by mounting the units vertically, this does save a lot on interior space. Now, I did have to lower these units because, remember, the, the tarp will be mounted and will descend slightly from the upper hull. If the pieces are up too high like this, you're going to make contact with the turret rotation system and that's going to lead to some problems. Now, 
one thing I have to do is I have to cut a small little notch on either side of the battery tray in order for the system to mount in a lower manner. This was done to the opposite side. Now I do have to come up with some kind of a mounting bracket system which secures the boxes to the sponson of the vehicle. This is definitely going to be addressed in the next video update as well. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech radio controlled German King Tiger heavy tank. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to this channel where you can get updates on new model showcase and project update videos when they get posted. Another way to keep in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There I have more pictures of this particular build since the project start, as well as the other smaller and larger scale builds that have been posted on the channel in the past. In addition to that, don't forget to swing by EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks for watching.